Art Supply Shop. I'm Lynn Ray for the Historic Arkansas Museum. Today we're making a cheese cutter. Now this is the old time cheese cutter that is, it looks like a little slingshot. And I've got a picture of it that's kind of drawn on the floor. Um, so if you'll look right here, there's the handle and it's kind of has a, a yoke or a Y and there's the wire that's stretched between two little loops and you just simply push that down on the cheese and cut the slice off, cut a piece off. It pushes right through it. That's like a piano wire, really small. So the handle can be any type you want. This, And, and by the way, that's the piece we're going to make it out of. So I'll put a point on each end and start shaping it. So we may or may not get done with it on camera. I doubt it because it's not even hot yet. However, we'll go ahead and get started and do the preliminary shaping on it. So just bear with us. We've had, again, uh, since we're in the season of where we have a lot of student, school students come in and visit the blacksmith shop, um, it pushed our schedule up after lunch in the afternoon hour. So that's why we've all of a sudden changed the timing of our video. So in our, our little visit with Blacksmith. But uh, I wanted to share that with you. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get started on this shape. And it's, it's in a stick form right now. I work on both ends and work then from the middle out. So it's symmetrical naturally as you saw. So I do the same thing on each end and then find the center of it, make it, make it fold it back on itself and then go from there. And we'll, from time to time we have to cool it off so we can hold it. So let's just get the point on it. This is a small material. It's only about a quarter inch in diameter. It's round, but I'm going to square it. I hate to keep making you chase it around. But I go from round to square and then back round again. And I don't want it to be a needle point. It's not necessary. But I want it to be paper. And even though you can't see the, any red color in it, I don't believe, it's still pretty warm. And so essentially I've used the residual heat to smooth and straighten that piece. So in general, it's just like it was, only has a taper on the end of it. So let's cool that off. And we'll go directly to the other end and do the same thing. So to be symmetrical, it works from basically the center both ways. It's starting to be summertime, so it's, uh, it's getting into that season where headbands, and a lot, a lot of sweating happens, so you'll have to, again, know what to expect. If you were here in the shop today, it's actually pretty pleasant. It's breezy, but by the middle of June, we're going to probably be suffering a little bit. Okay, here we go. hot again. back 
again to the same shape as this. So we've got it cooled off. Now I want to find the center of that. I'll take a chalk and a ruler. See if we can't determine the center of it. This ruler is not quite long enough to get full length, but that's okay. What we'll do is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just say ten. Let's put a mark on it at ten. And then when we go ten from the other way, that just means that halfway between the two marks, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Those two marks are 10 inches from the opposite ends. So exactly halfway between those marks is the middle of that bar. So what I will do is just simply mark that with a little dent in it. And so we've got it marked. and have a, uh, a little bit easier way of making the bend tight. So we'll go to the device here in a second. T-shape and then those ends come up and then we'll make the loops on the end. We can even put a twist in the handle if we want to and that's probably what we'll end up doing. If one, if one side's a hair longer than the other, you can say I got off a little bit, I may have, I'll trim the long one to match the short one. That's as simple as that. That's a simple solution to fix a little problem. I'm going to use the vise again. <coughs> as a helping hand. Now I'm running back and forth, so you'll have to bear with me for going back and forth in the shop. Okay. So we're just going to put enough material for let me show 
show you how that we can make those corners sharper. We'll make those corners sharper. So now we've got it's not, I mean, it's a little bit past the T-shape. And we'll put a bend about here and about here. And they'll come back. And then we'll straighten that up, of course. But the vise is important. You probably saw how important it is. Because this thing's hot. And you gotta uh, be able to hold it and make good, accurate bends. This is where I have to start thinking how wide are those two prongs going to be. So I have to think about how big is the cake of cheese, uh, if it's called a cake, I'm not even sure. But the piece of the big loaf or cake of cheese that you're slicing, uh, it needs to fit up in between those two prongs. So you can make, say, sandwich slices. But you, of course, it can be cut from all angles and any angle, just about it. But it needs to fit up in there between those two, like I said. So it needs to be big enough to be usable, but not so big that it becomes ungainly. So I'm going to roughly say four inches or so. Does that sound okay? So two inches each direction, two and a quarter each direction, four and a half. Total, maybe. Now, Mr. Casey just handed me a pair of tongs here, and these are some tongs we made a while back on camera. We were working on these are curling tongs. So I'll show you how to, that works. How, how this will be helpful. So get it, get it hot. the other side now and do the same thing to it. So this is a, any of these bends that I make in this piece is adjustable. So it's, it's no big deal if it's a little bit off. So one thing you have to do is just make adjustments. You're constantly making adjustments. So we'll see how it goes. And if, in a case like this, where I have to have more than one pair of tongs, actually I'm using three pairs, because I want to hand off to this set and then use that set. So I'll drop these <laughs> because I'm through with them. But I need to basically hold it in two places. So let's get a grip on it and drop the right spot. And as far as evenness is concerned, it don't look too bad. So now it's just, we're just gonna make some slight adjustments. This one is a, maybe a quarter inch longer than this one. I'll trim that off and we'll proceed from there. So let me get that hot and we'll trim that quarter inch off. I believe, I believe you'll be able to see the finished product or close to finish anyway shortly. Now, that little 
piece is on the floor, it's gone, so we're about there. And we're going to make a little outside curl on each side using the uh, scroll tongs. We're going to get it hot and use those scroll tongs. see that um, these tongs, they enable us to reach in there like a bird's beak and actually make that scroll. Now let's get the other side hot. Twisted a little on the handle, we'll straighten that out. And we might even put a spiral twist in the handle and piano wire or something of that sort will tie it very tightly and pull tension on these two arms. And that'll be like, like I say, like a piano wire tight. And that's what cuts into the cheese block and you'll cut slice, slices of cheese off the cake of cheese. So you got, you got to see the whole thing going together and the logic behind the different bends and turns and the construction of it. It's just so very simple. But uh, we were glad you were with us today here in the blacksmith shop. And we're gonna leave it with you again for the Historic Arkansas Museum. I'm Lynn Wright, thanks for being here. <laughs>